All right, let's make some modifications to our code in order to um, turn off the LED. So um, let's open the terminal and we will navigate to our folder. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to pull from the repository in case there are any changes. You may or may not see that there are changes, um, and uh, um, we're good to go now. We have the most recent version of the code. So I'm going to go ahead and close the terminal, and I want to open up my, um, not folder, I want to open up the Ninja IDE. So I'll go to the Ninja IDE here. And uh, if you haven't already, you're going to come here and open the project, and you're going to open ATTC 3260. The code that we're going to look at is 2.1.1 LED time. So let's pull up this code and this code. A nice part about this um, IDE is we can show two um, codes at the same time, two uh, pieces of code at the same time. So if I come here and I say split th this tab, uh, vertically, then I get LED time over here and LED on over here. This will allow me to see what's different and what we've added to um, each of the, the lines of code. So I've taken LED on and we've made some modifications to it. The first thing that you'll notice is I'm importing a library known as time. The library time allows me to delay um, a uh, piece of uh, line of code from running for a certain period of time, and I can specify that time here. One thing that I want to change on um, this uh, uh, particular um, uh, piece of code is I want to be able to turn on and then off the LED. So um, you could set a variable right here for time, and then I wouldn't have to put three seconds each time. So I could put the variable, you know, delay, and I could set it up here, but uh, I didn't do it for this uh, specific example, just to, to avoid as much uh, confusion as possible. So we have this code that we have from our previous uh, uh, time running the code. We had GPIO set mode to the physical location, and we want pin R to be an output. Now we're going to be doing some things with pin R. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to delay, and this is in seconds. So 3 indicates the number of seconds that we will be delaying the, uh, the code. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the code, or excuse me, turn the pin on. Which pin am I turning on? Pin 12, because I've assigned it to pin R as the variable. So pin R turns on. As soon as it's done executing this line of code, it's going to go to this line of code. So I'll wait three seconds, and then I will execute the next line of code. GPIO output pin R, and I'm going to change that to low. The high is 3.3 volts, and low is 0 volts. So that should turn my LED off. The final command that I will issue is GPIO.cleanup. This command right here ensures that anything that I've assigned to a particular pin is going to be cleaned up. So those warnings that I had um, previously when I ran the LED on Python code, um, that's going to clean that up and make sure that those uh, particular pins, pin 12, is no longer being assigned anything. It's back to being an input or an output based on assumption. This is the last line of code that we would want to run on most Python programs in order to make sure that the Raspberry Pi is back to its uh, original settings. All right, let's navigate back to our terminal and go into the folder lab 2.0. And now we will look at what is available in lab 2.0. And we want to run the lab 2.1.1 LED time. So if I type in Python, I want to execute a Python script. If I press space, 2.1.1, and then I can press the tab key. Now before we press enter, think about what's going to happen in this code. We are going to delay for three seconds, nothing is going to happen. We've assigned the value of pin R as an output, so pin number 12 becomes an output and then we wait three seconds. 
then pin R is turned to high and then we wait an additional three seconds and then pin R is turned to low and the program ends. So we press enter. There's a three second delay. The light turns on for three seconds then it turns off and the program ends. We also can notice that the light is off and we've cleaned up the GPIO with that last command. So the code that we just ran isn't super exciting. We were able to turn on an LED and then turn it off, but that's all it did. Um, there wasn't really any notification or anything to us. So we're going to make some modifications to this file in order to make it maybe a little bit more usable. The first thing that we should do is let's, uh, let's go ahead and tell the console um, when the program starts. So I'm just going to press um, enter uh, above time and I'm going to write a print statement. So remember we write a print statement by doing print and then an open parentheses and then we need to put this in double quotes and we're going to put start of the program. The next thing that I want to do is I want to know when my three second timer is over. So I can do a print statement and I can say turn on LED. And then let's do a print statement for when we turn off the LED. Got the double quotes. And then we'll do a final print statement. Whoops, that's in the wrong place. We need to put this after the sleep because the, the LED is on and then for three seconds and then after the three seconds we turn off the LED. Um, and then when it ends, let's, let's do a print statement there as well. Now this um, isn't necessarily uh, you know, super handy to have uh, to know this information, we can visually see the LED turn on and off. The benefit of using these print statements is in the console we can see where we are at in the program. It can help us identify if there's a problem or a, um, an, an issue that results with this. We'll use this uh, when we start talking about inputs to be able to provide data to the console so that we can read the information. So let's go ahead and save this and we will run it again in the terminal. Alright, we're back in the terminal. Um, if you prefer to run your code directly in the IDE, that's fine. I'll always be running it in the terminal though. Um, so we have saved our file and now we want to look at um, running it again. So if I uh, execute to Python command and then 2.1.1 That'll give me my LED time pi, and I press the Enter key. Now I see that I print to the console start of the program, and then I get turn on LED, turn off LED, and end of LED. Let's go back to our code and see if we can make this a little bit uh, uh, better organized. Um, Turning on the LED for three seconds and turning off the LED for three seconds doesn't really do a lot for us. So I'm going to put some space in between uh, the end of the program. And what I want to happen is I want this program to execute um, several times. Now the first thing that you might think is I'll just copy this and uh, I'll put it down here and I'll paste it and then it starts the program again. And I could do that if I wanted it to run five times. That's not really a good way to do it. If I needed to make a change, like I wanted to change this to five, I would have to go back through all of these. Now I could assign it a variable, but let's say that I wanted to remove the sleep time uh, right here. So we want to have repeatability in this. One of the ways that we can do that is through a loop. A loop is a way to have a program run for a certain period of time. In order to run a loop, we're going to create a counter. So under our P 
pin r counter, uh, excuse me, variable, let's set up a counter. So I'm going to say counter, and I'm going to call it 0. Remember, this could be anything. It could be bananas. But I just want it to be counter. Okay, so counter equals 0. Now I'm going to create what's known as a while loop. So I'm going to type in the um, command while, and then press a space. While, it means that do this command until you meet a certain condition. The condition that we want is while counter is less than the number 5. Okay, so we'll just give it a, an arbitrary value. So now what's happening is that the, um, this, this loop will run until counter is greater than 5. So it's going to run while counter is less than 5. So once it reaches 5, it will stop running this loop. The problem is, is counter has only been assigned to do a 0, right? It never increments. In order to increment the counter, we're going to come into while, and I'm going to say the first time that you run through this loop, I want you to increase counter by 1. In order to increase counter by 1, I could write the statement like this, counter plus 1. So now I would change the first time that this runs through the loop, counter would change to 1. And then the second time the, it runs through the loop, counter is 1, it would change to 2. There's a shortcut in order to uh, increase a, um, uh, a variable by 1, and you just do an equals, or sorry, it's a plus equals. Uh, plus equals 1. So now this while loop, anything that is indented after the while loop by a tab, it will run five times. So let's paste our code inside there. So we'll come down here and grab our code, and we will paste it. Now remember, it has to be tabbed over. That's how the uh, processor determines that this is part of the loop. So I'm going to do a tab to get everything over there. Now, if this counter was here, the uh, while loop would just continuously run forever. We want to make sure that the while loop um, has an ending, and it has an ending right here where I'm doing counter plus equals 1. All right, let's save this program. Let's remove this second uh, timer. And now what we expect to happen is this will run uh, the five times because it starts at zero and then it'll end when when counter equals five so five is less than five that's a false statement I will exit out of the while loop and then I will go into the final print statement all right when I save the file um, we'll notice that there is an invalid syntax right here and I decided to leave it that way because I wanted to be this would be a good opportunity for us to do some debugging so what we need to do is there's a problem with the while counter so there's a syntax error here the best way to be able to figure out syntax errors is we can go to the internets right and let's go to w3 schools and we want to learn about Python while loop. So I have the error with my Python while loop. And looks like right here it uh, talks about that. So um, Python, when I use while, what you'll notice is there's actually supposed to be a colon at the end prior to the indentation. So notice how these are all indented. They're all part of the while loop. But if I leave out that colon, that's a problem. So I come back to my code, and I add in the colon, and I save it, and now I can see that I am error-free. If we were to run this code in the command line, then we would see that there was a syntax error on a, probably would identify line 12 as the error, even though we really had the problem on the line before. All right, so now we'll go ahead and uh, start up the terminal again and run this code. Let's go back to the terminal, and now we will run our code um, with the while loop in place. So um, as a reminder, uh, we are working in the um, 2.1.1 LED time. So if I type in Python, 
2.1.1 and press tab. When I, when I press enter, I'm going to see the code run five times. And there'll be a little bit of a delay between each command line. So here we go. We start the program. We're delaying that three seconds. We turn on the LED. We delay another three seconds and turn off the LED. Start it up again. We probably could have removed the start of the program um, out of the while loop because we really only are starting the, the uh, program the one time. Um, however, now we can see that our LED is uh, turning on and off and it should execute that five times and then end the program and uh, we're back in the terminal. So a while loop can be very handy uh, when we want a program or we want something to run for a, a period of time based on some type of a condition. We'll be using this as we proceed through the course and uh, hopefully this was helpful in uh, uh, showing you how uh, we can turn on and off an LED. We'll get a lot more sophisticated as we move forward from this point.